Excellencies, youth advocates from around the world, change makers and friends of the planet. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Thank you so much for being here with us today. My name is Anne Sereli, and I am the Norwegian Youth Delegate on Climate Change on behalf of the Norwegian Children and Youth Council. It is an honor to welcome you here to the fifth public town hall of the Act for Nature Global Online Forum. This town hall is not only on the topic of youth, but has also been organized by youth constituencies on the theme, Youth Voices for Nature Environmental Governance During Times of COVID-19. Human society is standing at a very important crossroad, something never witnessed before. The situation where the world is reeling in the global health crisis brought by COVID-19 is clearly not business as usual. And therefore, environmental governance cannot just an, be another regular environmental governance. The next UN Environmental Assembly, UNIA 5, will be straight out of or still in a pandemic era. And it will need to pave way for ambition on the environmental dimension of Agenda 2030 and laying focus on the role of nature to achieve the SDGs. So in this town hall today, we will raise voices of young people for children of the world how need to, who need to be the center of the COVID response strategy. We know that most of us are joining from computer screens at home, but we would like to make this session as interactive as possible. Next to you on the screen, you will find a chat functionality, which we invite you to use to ask questions, which we will take during the interactive segment. Furthermore, we have arranged for a poll with questions where you can share your thoughts and perceptions. We want to commence the first and the second poll now, which you can see on your screen. The first question is, what does inclusive environmental government mean to you? And the second question is, what is the biggest barrier you face as a youth or youth-led group when activating, advocating for environmental challenges? So please mark your options and we will come to the result in a bit. Children and youth have continuously been advocating for nature conservation. Next in the panel, we have Ayush Chopra, 17 year old, who is founder of the SDGs for Children. It is a pleasure to welcome you today. Since a young age, Ayush has been involved in environmental activities. He is the author of Shaping a Fair World with SDGs and Human Rights, and also runs his own podcast title, Shaping a Fair World. Ayush has been recognized with the Diana Award with the high school, highest knowledge a young person working on social action or humanitarian efforts. Ayush, what does Build Back Better mean from an environmental children and youth perspective. Are these priorities being taken into account by policymakers? And what do you see as a barriers, barriers for meaningful engagement for children and youth? Mm -hmm. um, distinguished dignitaries and my dear fellow youth from all over the world, good morning to you all. I'm Ayush Chopra, 17 years old, youth delegate and founder of SDGs for Children from Canada. I'm here today to share the voice of youth on this platform as UNEP strongly support. Nothing about youth without youth. Suddenly, we are witnessing a greener and calmer environment even in our densest cities. But it took a pandemic to experience, which was all there for us. We were surrounded by the smog of our own greed and mindless acts. As we, as we have been locked in our homes for a couple of months, nature has healed tremendously 
air pollution and water level pollution have dropped impressively. Economy and ecology are interrelated and this situation has made it clear that the economy cannot be created at the cost of ecology. We the youngsters spend a great deal of our time and lives in school, but education is only effective when it results in the ability to life what one is learning. With better understanding comes the improved ability to think clearly and get things effectively done. We are the final generation who has the fighting chance to curb climate change. The sustainable development agenda is not about my issue or your issue. These are global issues and we need every one of these 17 SDGs to be achieved. You don't have to be a full-time environmentalist to bring the change in the environment. All you have to do is curb the pollution at your own individual level by using alternatives to the products that harm the environment. Example, every day, approximately 8 million plastics go into our ocean. The average time used for a plastic bag is only 12 minutes, but it can stay in the ocean for thousands of years. Consumption and production is a cycle. We cannot separate them from each other. We must find out where we can bring a change by using our powers to decide what decisions we are making. Most of us belong this cycle as being consumers. We need to choose wisely what we consume. When we are purchasing anything at the time, we need to decide which sort of business we are promoting. Is that adding value to the sustainable world or the producer is adding more, the, more to the climate crisis? We need to know more about the stories of today's producers and just not consume the product. We should promote more of the cyclic economy. Nothing is more powerful than making daily choices from the place of compassion, empathy and love. Sustainable and non-sustainable products can be differentiated simply by checking the details. You can see whether ingredients are chemical or organic. COVID-19 is impacting elders more, but the air we breathe is not discriminatory. Yet, children can have a more devastating effect on their tender lungs. Secondary impacts of COVID-19 COVID pandemic threaten children's life more than the disease itself. We call it a shadow pandemic. There is a shadow pandemic of violence against girls and women that extends far beyond refugees and displaced war victims. Millions of children are being pushed towards the brink of starvation. The attention of COVID-19 pandemic has pushed the implementation of sustainable development goals. Measures to curb the disease have worsened, existing inequalities forcing girls, school, girls out of school and placing them at heightened risk of violence at their home. One of the first things before we address this shadow, shadow pandemic is to accept there is one. We must prioritize the community of child-centered services with a particular focus on equity of, equity of access, particularly in relation to schooling, nutrition programs, immunization, and other maternal and newborn care, and community-based child protection. This is the evolution of the current system, preserving institution, stakeholders, safeguarding existing interest while realigning the purpose and goal of the overall activity. It needs a rethinking that across society and the gradual shaping of policies. Leverage the crisis for a reset of debts and values, abandon the old system, define the new, and use a kind of bad bank to park the past without putting a burden on future generations for a system that continues not to serve humanity. Build a forum wider than economic forum with the representatives from across cultures, gender, age, and society to co-create the fundamental charter to become the guiding principle. Leverage the climate forum, Freda, Fridays for Future, and Youth Councils to install an inclusive and creative dialogue across politics and institution. I repeat, nothing about us without us. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for that. Um, that was, I really got a lot from that. And um, next up, we're going to take questions from the audience. And um, here's a question to Ayusha. Um, how are children and youth mobilizing action during the pandemic? And what are your experiences from working in virtual platforms? What have been the benefits of the drawbacks of uh, working in this new way? Working, uh, working online has... Um has had some drawbacks and some good things. 
Um, children are running campaigns and projects online. Um, but the drawback of that is like there's no face to face meeting and work. Uh, there is no work happening on the ground right now. And because it's not happening, we don't have a long lasting impact. Uh, but the the benefit is um, there there are large collaborations are possible on virtual platform with really less barriers and more impact can be made online. Awesome. Uh, while we have been asking questions, you have also been ask, uh, answering some of our questions. And as you can see, we are now going to move on to uh, the answers of the first and the second poll question. So let me show you the result of the first. Oh, wow. Yeah, here we see that what inclusive environmental governments means in the time of COVID-19 has gotten yeah, very equal responses. Let's move on to the second question then. And what the biggest barriers that youth face is. Oh, wow. Here we see that 63% is on uh, governments understanding, uh, no, sorry, on policymakers understanding uh, and lack of understanding of US participation. So policymakers, here you have quite a, quite a big job to do. 